Okay, thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, at uh, this point, I'd like to hand over to Brother Michael. Good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon, happy um, Sabbath. I'm pleased to have the privilege to welcome one and all today to our service this Sabbath. I'd like to take this time out to welcome all our viewers on the internet. Um, they have been following us for quite some time, so I acknowledge their presence when this video goes on the on YouTube. Our morning service, or I should say our divine service, will begin with the hymn 334. O thou fount of every blessing. O thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore thee, may I still thy goodness prove. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love, here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger. Interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Never let me wander from thee. Never leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. At this time, we'll have our scripture reading. So Matthew 24, verses 13 and 14. Read. What he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Amen. Amen. Um, at this time, uh, we're going to open up the floor uh, for a season of prayer. So we're asking for two members um, as the Spirit leads to pray, and then Pastor Solomon will do the uh, intercessory prayer after we've had two members pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we are grateful that we can spend time in your presence on the Sabbath day. Lord, we assemble to, to honor, to worship, to praise and adore you because, Lord, we know that in, in this life we have no hope except we have hope in God. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful things that you continually do for us day by day by day Lord your mercies are new every single morning and it's because of your your mercy and your grace that we can be here dear Lord to worship you thank you for providing for our needs thank you for blessing us with health and strength and Lord even in uncertain times we can have confidence in Jesus Christ Lord you are the, the author and the finisher of our faith and so, to Lord, it's to you that we look for our sustenance. It's to you, Lord, that we look for our strength in times, in difficult times. Lord, as we come, we recognize that we are so unworthy of you. Lord, we are, each has gone to his own way, doing his own thing. And it, it's sin that separated us from, from seeing you face to face. But Lord, we are so grateful that before there was sin, Father, we had a savior in Jesus. And Lord, it's his spilt blood that we claim. 
to cleanse us from our sins and to wipe away the stain of our guilt. And Lord, it's in the name of Jesus that we come boldly to your throne, seeking grace in our desperate time of need. Lord, we, we love you because you first loved us. And so, Father, we know that there is no, no tear that we shed. There's no need that we have. There's no, no want that we are going through that you are not mindful of. And so, Father, we approach you with confidence, knowing that you care for us more than even that we care for ourselves. Father, have mercy on us in our, as we go through uncertain times in this world. We pray for your church. Lord, may we not just be reactive, looking to survive and to get through, but may we be led by your Holy Spirit to be proactive, to reach souls for your kingdom. Father, we, we see the turmoil in the world. We see the turmoil in the political world, in the financial world, in the societies around us. And we know, Father, that human beings do not have the answer. And so we pray, Lord, that you would give us wisdom so that we would be able to tell the world about a soon coming King. Father, bless us, we pray, as we come together on the Sabbath day to, to worship you. May what we experience today draw us closer and nearer to you. May our walk be, be transformed, dear Father, by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh Lord and Father, we great we're grateful that um, you've cared for us, you've looked after us, Lord, and um, you've made it possible for us to come before you today, in the presence of one another, to fellowship, <coughs> glorify your name, Lord, to give you thanks and praise for all that you've done for us, Lord. We we recognize you as um, the giver of life, the maker of life. Lord, you have blessed us with so much. And however small it is, Lord, we don't want to take it for granted. We thank you because we know that there are others who are not as privileged as we may be. Even though there are times when we may feel that we don't have much. But Lord, that little we have, help us to use it wisely so that we can share your love and the blessings. We thank you for your mercy, Lord, and um, we um, also thank you that um, you're able to forgive us of our sins and whatever wrongs we've done. You're faithful and just to forgive us. Lord, we pray for leadership. We, ask, we pray for government. We ask that you will lead and guide so that those in charge may think of the effects their leadership, their presence have on other people around the world. We pray for the leadership of the church also. We pray for the sick. We pray for those who are lonely. We pray for those who are destitute, those who are ill in emotional, mental ways. Lord, we ask that um, you'll transcend your blessing so that um, we, can, we can share it with others, that they might find that glimmer of hope they may have, that faith that um, they can look forward to the day when we can be without pain, without worry, we can be free. Lord, we ask that um, may this week of prayer not simply come to an end because um, it's the end of it, but it may be the beginning that we may have a closer, longer term relationship with you. Hear our prayers today, I ask in your name. Amen. Oh, gracious Lord, thank you, Lord, for all your blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us throughout the week and bringing us today to worship you in this Zoom meeting. Thank you for the abundant blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us as we continue to hold our faith on you. May our faith be grow day by day and cling on to the without any hindrance in this last 
days of this earth history mm. as we all fasting and praying may our prayers be uplifted to the cro- to the throne of grace and listen our prayers he you know our prayers what we are praying for you know each and everything that we are thinking in our minds because you are the creator and sister of this universe mm-hmm. you have created this earth in a purpose father in heaven as this time we specially pray for people who are suffering in this pandemic time in various ways please god have mercy upon this earth and heal this earth from this deadly virus that you have that the earth is facing in this virus you have blessed your children in the past days as we have learned in the moses time so many plagues have come across but you have protected your children without any harms and dangers in that times same way god please protect us from this virus and help us to be a great witness in this time of troubles that we are facing on this earth bless this earth with a mighty power because you have purpose you have created this earth in a purpose way everything in on this earth you have created you know how to protect this earth thank you for leading us and making us alive in this earth help us to draw close ourselves and help us to live a life that is pleasing to thee help us to always put you first in everything that we do help us to decrease ourselves and increase you in everything that we do in our daily lives mm. so that our lives may be meaningful on this earth and be a great witness for thee to serve in this earth especially pray for the sick and the suffering wherever they are god so many people are suffering with this virus some of them lost their loved ones some of them are struggling with this virus in various places your mighty healing hand upon them and give them the the health that they need to overcome the the situation that they are facing in their lives help them and give them all the needful help that they need in this situation god bless the young children and the world ones in this pandemic time please comfort them and give them the assurance that you are there for them to protect them in all harms and dangers i pray for all the adventist leaders around this country around the world and all the governments that they are have planning to protect from this virus may your wisdom be with them your guiding hands and lead them and guide them to bring end to this virus in a betterment way i pray for our speaker of the hour elder mark as he is going to break the bread of life thank you for choosing us choosing him to preaching to us has he going to deliver the message to encourage each and every one of us 
the Sabbath, whatever he speaks, me realize from the throne of grace and help us to listen whatever he speaks and help us to practice in our daily lives. Continue to bless him and guide him. Be with him in his ministry wherever he goes. Bless his family and guide them and give them the, all the needful help in their house. Continue to bless us and guide us and lead us according to thy will. Once again, I commit ourselves into the care and keeping God and help us to increase you in everything that we do and help us decrease ourselves and live a life that is pleasing to thee. This ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Um, at this point, um, we will be, we have a children's story, I believe, Mark. Yes, you want me to go into it? Yes, please. Okay. Um, now, I may have used a similar story before, but I'm going to kind of tweak it. Um, I don't know if you guys, my, wait there a second, my hand, uh, it's a, what we call a, a lighter, I mean, if you can see the flame. Now, the reason that that flame can be formed, as you can see, is because lots of different things work together. You, you've got the, the outer coating of plastic, and if you look closely, you can maybe see, um, let me, you can see in the lighter, like a liquid, that's called lighter fluid. So you've got plastic holding lighter fluid. And at the top of the lighter, just inside this part here, you've got what's called a flint. There's that little button there. When you strike the flint, it's a small stone that causes sparks. The sparks cause the lighter fluid to ignite, and then you get the flame. Now, if one piece was missing, you wouldn't be able to get the, the flame. If there was no plastic, there would be nowhere for the lighter fuel to be held. If you had no um, button like this, you couldn't release the lighter fluid. And if there wasn't a flint, you could release the lighter fluid, but there wouldn't be a spark to make it burn. And so lots of things work together um, that give us a flame. Now, the flame that you get from the lighter can be used for good things. It can be used for bad things. I'll use this to light the stove so that I can cook. I can use this to light the fire to keep my hands warm. Yeah, but I could also use this to burn someone. I could use the flame to set something on fire that ought not to burn. And so I choose what I do with the flame that this lighter um, forms. And I have to make sure that I choose to use the flame in the right way. Now imagine this lighter as a person. Each of us has different parts. And God has made it so that, that most people can speak. So imagine the flame of this lighter is like the words that we speak or the fact that we can speak. We have tongues, we have voice boxes, we have minds and we're able to basically um, speak words. Now, just as I can choose to use the fire from this lighter to do good and bad things, we can use our words to help or to hurt people. And so... We put lighters together that we might have flames, yeah? And we can use the flames for good or we can use the flames to do bad things. God has put us together. The Bible says that God has created us. Yeah? Genesis 2, Genesis 1 and 2 talk about God creating Adam and Eve and giving them jobs to do. Now, God created us that we might speak, that we might say things, that we might do things. But it's up to us to choose to do the right things. So just as I can choose to use fire in a positive or a negative way, I have to realize that I can choose to use my words in a positive or a negative way. 
Using your, your words in a positive way would be saying please and thank you. It would be using your words to help people, to teach people. But we can use our words to, to hurt people. We can call people names. We can call people all kinds of things. We can even lie. We can use our words to tell lies, to deceive and to mislead people. Um, and the, the thing is this, God doesn't force us to use our words in the right way. God expects us to choose to use our words in the right way. He expects us to tell the truth. He doesn't force us to tell the truth. So we have to choose to do the right things. We have to choose to use our words wisely. We have to thank God that he has made it possible for us to be able to speak and to hear and to see and to do things. And the things that we do should be good. And this is where the Bible comes in. The Bible is there to help us that we might know what is good. The Bible also talks to us about what is bad. And we have to choose to do the good and choose not to do the bad. We have to use our voices, our bodies wisely so that we don't hurt people with our voices, so that we don't hurt people with our bodies. And so God has given us a guide, the Bible, but he's also given us prayer. And when we pray to God, we need to ask him to give us the strength to do the right things. And even a desire to do them. Because some people struggle to even want to do right, to even want to do good things. Some people like to burn people down with their words. We have to ask God to help us to do the right things. I'm hoping what I've said has made sense. Um, so whenever you, you, you're doing anything, ask God to help you to do it right. Ask God to help you to do it as, as best as you can. Use your words wisely. Have manners, say please and thank you. Encourage people, try and teach people, try and teach people and, and ask God for guidance in everything that you do. And thank you for listening. I'm hoping that what I've said is clear, is clear enough for it to have made sense. God bless you all. Thank, thank you for that, Mark. Um, I'd also like to say um, a special welcome to Sister Scarlett. Um, we know she's had issues with her internet and telephone and we've missed you the last couple of weeks so welcome to you sister scarlett and brother scarlett if he's in the back um at this time um just before we hear uh elder mark um elder mark langston uh is no stranger to us and we thank him for being available and allowing the lord to use him to deliver the message but before we hear elder mark uh, we will be favored with a meditational item which the music coordinator will uh, give us more information on we've got one more song it comes to us from the great lakes academy choir called beautiful zion you will be blessed by this as you were by the other songs
Okay, I'm just going to just say a short word of prayer. Um, and I'll ask you to pray, pray for me um, as I pray for, for myself and for you guys too. So let's pray for each other. Uh, dear Lord, as we uh, now break the bread together, I pray that you would you would guide us as you have done. What we've been breaking the bread all morning. Um, so we're just continuing to, to break bread together. So continue to guide us. Um, this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so um, the scripture reading was taken from Matthew 23, verses 13 and 14. Um, what I want to emphasize is the use of a very positive word in the context, and that is the word shall. In verse 13, it says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So if we endure by the grace of God, we shall be saved. Now, what we're seeing at the moment with the pandemic, even with what's going on in the US, um, when you look at what's happening with the election, um, you've got more or less a 50-50 split. And all kinds of anger is being incited because of accusations about um, voter fraud and so on and so forth. Uh, now imagine the scenario, potential scenario, um, if a certain side wins, they're saying that they're going to um, take away guns and, and, and maybe even um, nullify the Constitution to a certain degree. Now, that may well result in those who want to keep their guns using their Second Amendment rights as they see them to, to maybe try to remove what they might perceive as a tyrannical government. And so we can't say what will happen. We got, you know, whoever, whoever wins, you know, the election. I'm not here to talk politics. I'm basically saying that we need to keep our eyes fixed on what's happening in America to a certain degree, more so God, obviously, or ultimately God, um, because what happens in America will affect us. It will affect the world. Uh, and so we need to pray uh, that the Lord continues to intervene. And we need to rest assured that Daniel 2 is still true when it says that God sets up kings and brings them down. So ultimately, God is in control. Though it may seem at times that he isn't, he is. He has a plan. And we can be part of that plan if we so desire, if we choose to surrender and allow him to work in us, for us and through us, we can be part of his plan. So it, it says in verse 13, we're in, we're in trouble. We're in trouble sometimes. Um, previous verses call our time the beginning of sorrows, but we're given a promise here in verse 30 that if we endure, we shall be saved. So everyone who is saved is going to have to have endured. But Philippians 4 and verse 13 is a sobering promise. It says a comforting promise. It says I can do, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So our endurance is a result of us believing and accepting that Christ will strengthen us. Um, verse 14 reads, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness. Now, notice the use of the word shall again. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness. So there's no could it be or maybe about it. The gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness to every nation. Um, and then the end shall come. So we have to endure to the end. We'll be saved. We also have to preach the gospel to bring about the end. So uh, um, gospel preaching endurance is what's needed to bring about the end. Bear in mind that Second Peter talks about us hastening the day of the coming of the Lord. And we can do this by enduring and preaching and preaching and enduring. Now, what we see in the book of Revelation are references to um, a spiritual place. And that spiritual place is, is Babylon. Revelation 17 and verse 5, for example, speaks about Babylon the Great. Um, it's not talking about a literal city, but we can learn lessons about spiritual Babylon um, from the literal city and what happened to God's people in the literal city. Um, and there were lots of shells that God's people could lean on when in literal Babylon. Uh, and what I want to do is for a little while just, just focus on some of what happened in the book of Daniel and how the, the, the 
Hebrews who were taken into Babylon trusted in the shells of God's word. And the reason I'm doing that is because, as I may have shared with you before, um, and just a minute ago or so, they were in literal Babylon. We're in spiritual Babylon. The, the thing is about those guys, though, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, we see the entirety of their story. We see the end from the beginning. We can look at their story as a whole. Their story arc was started and finished. So we can see um, how much God did for them, what had to happen to them, what they did in response to what happened to them. We see their beginning, we see their middle, we see their end. Now, we can't see our end um, in a literal sense, but we can spiritually in the sense that we can we can see the entirety of their story. We can, we can ask, where are we in relation to where they were? Are we in similar positions? You know, have we passed certain tests as they did? And so we can look at their story and we can ask, you know, where does our story line up with theirs? And we can draw from what God did for them and the strength that we need because we serve the same God. And so when we look at their story, it's, it's a, 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 a window into our experience. They were different people, but they were serving the same God that we serve. And so their story, to a certain degree, is our story. Their beginning is our beginning. Their experience is our experience. Their end is our end. We will have the same end as those guys if we trust God as they did. If we follow Jesus in spiritual Babylon, as they follow Jesus in literal Babylon, we'll be okay. We have to endure just as they did. But while they were enduring, or their endurance actually empowered the gospel that, that God um, wanted them to carry into Babylon. Hope you guys are following. So I'm not going to keep you for too long. I just hope I'm hoping that the time that we spend together sharing uh, will be a lot of food for thought. So if we turn to um, the book of of, of Daniel, um, Daniel chapter one to start with, um, and I'm not going to go into any great detail where texts are concerned. Just going to touch on a few verses and a few points that we can draw from from the verses that we can apply. Um, where our stories are concerned. Um, in Daniel, we see that Nebuchadnezzar comes along, he besieges Jerusalem, King Jehoiakim. Um, he is given into the hand of, 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 of Nebuchadnezzar. In other words, God permits Nebuchadnezzar to, to prevail. Um, Nebuchadnezzar gives instruction to Ashpenaz to um, bring certain um, captives from Jerusalem all the way to um, Babylon. He, that is Nebuchadnezzar, had a practice of taking the cream of the crop from different kingdoms to strengthen his own. That was kind of a custom in the ancient world. Um, they're, they're kind of captives, um, but your intention where the captives are concerned is to, to weaken the nation that you want to keep subdued and to strengthen your own. This is why Ashpenaz was given instruction to say, bring the intelligent ones, the ones who can best serve me in my kingdom. And so with that thought in mind, Nebuchadnezzar gives to them what he thinks is the best kind of food because he wants them to be sharp. We have to look, or it's often um, the, 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 the opinion of some, but let me say it's the opinion of some, that, that Nebuchadnezzar was, was trying to attack them by changing their diet, but he wasn't. He thought that he was helping them but he was ignorant of, of, of what good food actually was. So he was of the opinion that the food he ate was the best. The best for um, intellectual development and so on and so forth. But God, what God did, he revealed through the faithful ones um, the truth about diet. And we see in chapter 1 and verse 8. Um, that Daniel purposed in his heart that he wouldn't define himself. There is a lesson, a great lesson for us in that. In the sense that, well, let me put it this way. We have to ask, what did Daniel do that he might purpose in his heart that we can emulate? Now, I believe that he was living out Psalm 119, verse 11, which says, Thy word have I hid in my heart. We can do that. We can better understand, um, you know, regulations, relation, relational to lifestyle, diet, and so on and so forth, by hiding the word in our hearts, so that we can show people the way. 
And we can see a little window there into <clears throat> what God's purpose was for the Hebrews in literal Babylon. He wanted them to help the Babylonians. He wanted them to use their words, like in the children's story, to build up and not to bring down. To build up and not to bring down. And that's what we have to do in, in spiritual Babylon. We need to help people. We need to show people a better way. The better way is in the word. We need to hide that better way in our heart so we can show people that what they may be trusting isn't really trustworthy. What they think is helpful isn't really helpful. That's our purpose. Now, in chapter one, because of their faithfulness, if you read through the story, you'll see that they were blessed with talents. They were given gifts, spiritual gifts. Now, one thing that I've noticed studying through um, chapters one, two, and three is that what God does for the Hebrews, as described in one chapter, helps them where the chapter after is concerned. For example, the gifts that they received, most, most so Daniel, the gift that Daniel received in chapter one, helped where chapter two was concerned because Daniel was blessed with the ability to understand dreams and visions. And then we see chapter two, Nebuchadnezzar having a dream or a vision in a dream that he forgets um, you know, laying aside or putting aside that he didn't understand it. He didn't even at first remember it. But you see how God works? God gave Daniel a gift that basically helped Daniel to help people in chapter two. He helped the king. And also because of the fact that God was able to use Daniel because of Daniel's gift and because of Daniel's faithfulness, the wise men were saved. Because remember, Nebuchadnezzar sent out a decree to kill all the wise men. And my understanding of the story tells me that the, the first house that they go to is Daniel's. So because of Daniel's connection to God, the wise men are saved too. And that's a little insight into God's plan for the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved the wise men that he didn't want them to perish. And, and they should have read into that and seen something about God. I'm not sure that they did because later on in, in the book of Daniel, they're still kind of rebellious. I want to focus um, our attention more so on chapter, chapter three. Just to kind of bring us there, just a little overview of chapters one and two. So chapter one, they're tested in different ways. Their faithfulness results in them being blessed with gifts that prepares them for chapter two. In chapter two, we see Daniel utilizing the talent that God had given him to help the king to save the wise men. And this is the thing. We, as God's people, we need to have an understanding or a, a, a knowledge of what God has blessed us with talents wise. Everyone has at least one talent. We have to use these talents to help others. That's letting your light shine. Some of us are born with, with skills that God can sanctify. Like some people, they're just naturally good singers. Some people are naturally, you know, strong people. God will sanctify those talents or sanctify the person who has those talents so that that, that person can use the, the talents that they've been blessed with from birth to help others. When you're born again, you, you, you're given spiritual gifts and you're meant to use them in the same way to, to help people and to give God glory. So Daniel receives a talent that he's able to use in chapter two to help the king. The king, to a certain degree, um, acknowledges God. He doesn't embrace God as his own God. He, he, he refers to Daniel's God as a God of gods, as a God above, above other gods. So he and Nebuchadnezzar at the end of chapter two is still into um, like the many gods idea in the sense that he, he, he kind of rates gods according to their strength. And he's basically saying that the God of the Hebrews, he's probably the strongest, but he doesn't embrace um, the God of the Hebrews. Our God is his personal savior. Um, and we see in chapter three, a, a streak of rebellion, because in chapter two, Nebuchadnezzar is clearly shown that his kingdom will fall. Remember the, st the, the statue, head of gold, chest and arms of silver, belly and fires of brass and so on. Um, each metal making up the image, representing a, a different kingdom, he's being the head of gold. And he is told clearly that, 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 um, that the kingdom of Babylon will fall. And he accepts that. He accepts that. But we see him in chapter three, making a replica image entirely of gold, entirely of gold. And he seeks to use his state power to implement image worship 
He used his music, his state different together to bring them into his plan um, to enforce this this image worship. Um, and we see um, the, the fact that this thing it, it affects God's people in Babylon because that's where they are. They're in Babylon. Now, when we look at Revelation 13, I'm not going to go into any great detail. We see a reference to image worship that will be enforced. Now, what we're seeing um, is a story in literal Babylon that, that helps us to better understand what happens in spiritual Babylon as described in Revelation 13. Now, if we look at their story and what God did for them, it's no different what, than what God wants to do for us. Our story is the same, but it's not located. We're not located in a literal city in 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 Iraq, because that's where you know ancient Babylon was located in modern day Iraq. It's it's a worldwide thing now, but God wants us to do the same in the world as the Hebrews did, the faithful ones did in in spiritual Babylon, in literal Babylon. Sorry, and He will have given us gifts that we might faithfully serve Him, that we might faithfully represent Him. What he's also given us, though, remember, I'm talking about um, the importance of the, the, the shall word where God's word is concerned. Um, we are told, scripture reading, Matthew 24, that we need to endure to the end and we shall be saved. We need to um, preach the gospel. The gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness before the end comes. So we have a similar job to those guys. Now, when you look at Isaiah, chapters 43 to 45 there's elsewhere in isaiah prophecies to do with the, the the time that they would spend in babylon but let's go to isaiah 43 for example um now bear in mind that isaiah is speaking about um the captivity period um relational to babylon let's look at some of the promises that the hebrews are given in relation to their stay in babylon for example look at verse 2 now, this is very um, key in the sense that verse two highlights or is a promise that I believe the Hebrews lent upon, trusted in, when they were tested in chapter three of Daniel. Remember, they were threatened with burning fiery furnace. Look at the, the promise that they're given in Isaiah 43 and verse two. It says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. I believe that the, the, the three faithful Hebrew boys, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, trusted in this promise. This is a shall. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. This is why they could say with confidence, we are not careful, Daniel 3 and verse 16, to answer thee in this matter, O king. And God will deliver us. They had a shall promise. But they even said, they went on to say, but even if it's not his plan to deliver us, we're still not going to bow down. So they had this shall promise in Isaiah 43 that they lent upon when it came to them enduring and then preaching the gospel in literal Babylon. If we go down to um, verse 7, it says in relation to the experience in Literal Babylon, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory, I have formed him, yea, I have made him. And so we see in verse 7 that, that, that they're there, they're told by God that you're in Babylon for my glory, so I have a plan. I have a plan. And so the Hebrew boys were faithful in relation to the fact that they were trusting that God had a plan and God has a plan for us. God has a plan for us. We have to be faithful and trust that he does. We don't always see the end from the beginning. But we can help ourselves to do so to a certain degree by looking at how God has led his people in the past. Because it's the same God. Look at verse 9. It talks about nations being brought together. And it talks about him, that is God, bringing forth witnesses. It says in verse 10 that, that you are my witnesses. Now bear in mind chapter 3 of Daniel. We see the nations are called together to worship the image but God is saying look you're going to be my witnesses you're going to glorify me so imagine in, in, in Daniel 3 when the three faithful Hebrews see all of the developments going on maybe just maybe they cast their minds back to what Isaiah had promised and they thought oh this is all part of what God's plan is 
for us here. So we can see God's plan um, playing out. And, and we're aware of, of promises that we can lean upon when God's plan begins to play out. So my point is, the literal Hebrews in literal Babylon weren't in the dark in relation to what would happen to them. They had prophecies and promises. And they actually, when they saw the prophecies being fulfilled, they lent upon the promises. And we have to do the same. We're in spiritual Babylon. There are things going on all around us. Things are in turmoil in the USA on a worldwide scale because of the whole pandemic. But God has a plan. What we need to do is, is, is hide in our hearts the word. We need to understand the, the prophecies. We need to um, familiarize ourselves with the, 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 the promises that, that God has given to us that we can lean upon when prophecy is fulfilled. We need to be aware of, of, of Daniel and his friend's story in, in Babylon and see how God led them. We need to also look at people like Joseph who was taken into Egypt because Babylon to a certain degree typifies the world, as does Egypt. As does Egypt, we saw Daniel taken into Babylon, we saw Joseph taken into, um, into Egypt. But because of the faithfulness of these two young men, they were able to reach kings. They were able to reach um, presidents and prime ministers. And, and we will follow in their footsteps if we follow Jesus as they follow Jesus. And so we need to bear in mind, we need to familiarize ourselves with the shells of God's word, the promises of God's word. People all around us, um, let's go to um, Luke 21. Almost finished, not going to keep you too much longer. Luke 21. Um, just to kind of look into, um, well, I think Luke 21, Matthew 24, as we've touched on, as well as uh, Mark 13. All our windows into um, this time. And when we look at Luke chapter 21, I'm just looking for the um, verse, it's verse 26. We see a reference. Um, I'll read the verse. Luke 21, verse 26 says, It says, Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Are we seeing that all around us even now? that people's hearts are failing them for fear. And the thing is, what happens to a person who is fearful, stressed and under pressure? What happens to their immune system? They can quite easily fall ill because fear and stress and anxiety, Proverbs tells us that um, a broken spirit dries up the bones. Now what's significant about the bones? What do the bones do for us? What do T cells that are in our bone marrow produce? They produce white blood cells. And if your white blood cell count is affected by stress, prolonged stress and anxiety, it actually affects your immune system, your ability to fight illness. Now, now more than ever, we need to be, you know, um, developing our ability to fight illness. So we have to avoid stress. So we need to experience what um, Philippians 4 and verse 3 talks about. So you've got men's hearts failing them for fear, as described in Luke 21 and verse 26. But if we jump to Philippians chapter 4, we're going to see that God offers us something that the world needs to. He offers us something that the world needs to. Um, when we look through Philippians chapter 4, it talks about workers for Lord, the Lord, it calls them um, yoke fellows and so on and so forth um, in verse 3. We're told in verse 4, Philippians 4 and verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. We need to be happy, we need to rejoice, and that, and that doesn't mean walk around with smiles on our faces, but we need to trust the Lord to the extent that we can rejoice comes what may. It talks about in verse 5, our, our moderation being uh, made known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. It talks about not being careful for anything or not taking unnecessary risks. It talks about the importance that we're coming to the end of the, 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 the week of prayer. Um, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And then in verse 7, remember in Luke 21, and verse 26, it talks about men's hearts failing them for fear because of what's going on around them. Now in verse um, 7 of Philippians 4, it says, 
and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So to bring everything together, we have to endure. We have to preach the gospel. We have to walk in the footsteps of, of the Hebrew boys in um, spiritual Babylon. As they walked in literal Babylon, we have to walk in the same way in spiritual Babylon. They were in literal Babylon, we're in spiritual Babylon. We have to follow them as they follow Jesus. If we're going to endure to the end, we need to familiarize ourselves as never before with Jesus. We need to get to know him. We need to be in a position to receive the peace that passes all understanding. Why does this peace pass all understanding? It's because people, this is how I understand it, see, people will be unsure as to why and how you can be at peace. They won't understand why you're at peace. How can you be at peace when all of this is going on around you? And we have to reveal to them it's because I'm with the Lord. It's because I know or I've been given insight into, I can make sense of what's going on around me because of the Bible and what God's word says. And we can help them to see sense. I'm clued up as to what's going to happen and what I have to do in response to that. And that's not because I'm some, um, you know, fortune teller. It's because I've made myself aware of what the more sure word of prophecy says. So I can't prepare. I've got examples of individuals who have gone through similar situations, Joseph, Daniel, his three friends, and so on. There are others. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning lessons from their lives. I'm trusting in the same God that they trusted in. If I'm thrown into a lion's den, I know that God can deliver me. If I'm thrown into a fiery furnace situation, I know that God can deliver me. And if he doesn't, I trust that it was his plan that I wasn't delivered. And my death, the lack of deliverance from, from, from death for me, is what was necessary to for God to deliver other people. God doesn't always save us from death, but he, he'll prepare us for it if that's his plan for us. Look at John the Baptist. And so to kind of close, we as God's people, as never before, we need to be experiencing, living the um, peace that passes understanding because people's hearts are failing them to fear. Lots of people around me are terrified. They don't know what to do. They're, they're kind of doing what Adam and Eve did in the garden. They're trying to sow fig leaves together. They don't know any better, so they're doing what they think can help them. But when we saw God coming in the cool of the day, the fig leaves weren't enough because they still felt ashamed and naked. And that's the thing. We don't want people to feel ashamed and naked when Jesus comes. So we have to go looking for them in the cool of the day or right now. And we need to show them the better way. But we ourselves need to be experiencing and living that better way. We can't talk about the better way if we're ourselves not connected to it, if we're not walking. I suppose we can, but how effective will our words be? And so we need to practice what we preach and preach what we practice. So my appeal is simple. You know, just claim that peace that comes from, from believing God. Surrender to him and he will work in you. He will work in me, he will work in us, both to will and to do with his good pleasure. And the last word is this. Philippians 4, I think it's verse 13, maybe verse 14, when it talks about God working in us both to willing to do with his good pleasure. just want to highlight how the fight kind of plays out where we are concerned. I believe that God is giving people in the world a desire to do something better, a desire to improve themselves, to connect to him ultimately. Not everyone in the world knows that, so we have to go in and tell them that's what's happening. Now, the battle is connected to um, a person or people acting to or responding positively to the urging through the Holy Spirit that God is placing upon them, an urge, a desire for something better. Too often as a church, we have fallen short when it comes to the doing part. We know what we should do, but we fail to put it into practice. That needs to end. Not after the pandemic, but during it. We can't wait until um normal returns because it may never return it may never return we may not ever go back to the way that things were but we shouldn't wait for some kind of return to normality before we start sharing the gospel with people as best as we can in any way that we were able to very final point paul wrote most of the new testament under house arrest in rome so he was in a lockdown if you will we have the internet. We're, at, we're in this forum now meeting and, and, and it's a pleasure to spend time with you guys. But without the internet, we wouldn't be able. So what else can we do via the internet? 
We need to reach out. There are social media platforms that I'll not name, but use them before it's too late to just say a word in due season, to reveal to people that you're at peace. You know, do all that you can. We, we're not limited by our circumstances when we connect to God. He can lift us above our circumstances and help us to work in spite of what's around us, in spite of the restrictions. Um, I'll end it there. Um, thank you so very much for your listening ears. Um, God bless you all as a church. And I pray that the Lord continues to, to help us and to use us as best as he can. Uh, and um, God bless you all. Just going to say a short prayer. Uh, dear Lord, um, thank you for this opportunity. And thank you for your word. And thank you for the members in this forum visiting friends also. Pray for us all, Father. We need your help as never before. Um, in Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. 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 I'd like to uh, thank Elder Mark Langston for uh, allowing the Lord to use him um, to remind us uh, of the seriousness of the times where we're living and uh, the importance of uh, our roles as believers um, in fulfilling the gospel um, by using our God-given talents, uh, by how we serve one another, um, by allowing the Holy Spirit to develop uh, our, uh, the character of Christ in us. Um, and as um, we read, that, you know, um, God will give us peace to endure and he'll give us the strength to endure also. So with that in mind, um, we will turn to our closing hymn, which is um, hymn 595, Let Every Lamp Be Burning Bright. <laughs> as we uh, close off uh, today's service. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. And Lord, we ask that, uh, that each member 
uh, represented here will recommit their lives to you. Help us, dear Father, as we strive to live for you day by day. Lord, I ask that we, we will draw closer to you and that the Holy Spirit will play a prominent role in our lives and that uh, our lives will be a witness to others. Help us, Lord, to, to know what we believe and to share our love for you, that this gospel commission will go far and wide to hasten your coming. Father, dismiss us from this service, but never from your presence. And forgive us, Lord, where we have failed you. And we thank you for uh, your blessings as we go forward. We ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen.